Good morning, CTC students. Um, I'm Dr. Andrea Foskett. I am a co-chair for the Department of Science and Agriculture. We just wanted to do a live session with you all today to uh, go over uh, some of the things that we do, some of the programs that we offer um, in our department and answer some questions, uh, some pertinent questions regarding uh, what's going on right now uh, with the with our, our instructional format um, of the different classes that we're offering for the summer, as well as maybe even provide some insight into what's going to happen for the fall um, as best as we can answer those questions at this point. So uh, we are the science and ag department. We offer several different um, programs, several different degrees, associates uh, degrees. Uh, we offer two in biology, uh, one with a human biology track and the other is an organismal biology track. We also offer um, an associate's degree in environmental science, one in geology and one in chemistry. So many of you have been taking classes with us um, over the past few semesters. So many of you probably are familiar with the science and the ag faculty. Uh, we offer a wide variety of different classes that go towards um, as prerequisites to other programs. And also if you do want an associate's degree in any of the tracks that I mentioned. I have with me uh, Mr. Keaton Eric, who is our program coordinator for, for the Ag program, and I'll let him discuss his side of things in just a little bit. I just want to quickly go over some of the classes that we offer. We have been offering for all of these different semesters. We will continue to offer all of these classes um, to a smaller degree in the summer, but of course in the fall, uh, we will get back to our regular schedule where we will offer uh, the entire variety of our science and our agriculture courses. Um, so some of the biology classes that we offer are uh, biology one and biology two. This is for either science majors or non-science majors. So you'll probably, many of you have probably taken 1406, 1407, that's going to be the science majors equivalents, and then the 0809 would be the non-majors equivalents. A lot of these are introductory biology classes that are fantastic for you to get a good foundation to help you get situated with other programs. Um, other program, many of you are interested in nursing. So some of you are probably taking our um, anatomy and physiology classes, uh, one and two, or our microbiology classes uh, for either science or non-science majors. We've got uh, a host of different chemistry offerings as well. Uh, general chemistry one and two, organic chemistry one and two. Uh, all of these are options for you to take again to fulfill your prerequisites or part of your degree plan, either to get an associate's degree here or to use those to transfer credit into other institutions like Texas A&M Central Texas or where whatever your goals may be uh, in terms of colleges and universities. Um, for physics, we offer um, college physics one and two, university physics one and two. We do a uh, solar system, um, stars and galaxies, physical sciences. Uh, so there's quite a few variety of physics classes to choose from. And I know a lot of our students take uh, the college and the university physics here with us at CTC and then transfer those classes over to A&M Central Texas for other higher advanced engineering degrees. Uh, for the environmental science, uh, we've got um, the basic environmental science uh, classes as well as for geology, we've got the physical and the historical geology classes. Um, I think I've mostly covered all of the different uh, courses that we offer here within our department. And a lot of these classes are offered face to face. We also have online um, course equivalents to these classes. Some of them are offered in both um, instructional formats. Um, we can do this as a face to face format or uh, an online format. And some are strictly offered in an online format. So if you go to Web Advisor and you are interested in a particular discipline, you're going to see a wide variety of classes uh, to kind of um, uh, explore and see what fits uh, the needs of um, your program or whatever your educational goals may be. 
I'm going to um, hand this over to Mr. Eric here at this point and let him chat a little bit about um, the Ag program. Mr. Eric. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Foskett. Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm the Ag guy. I'm the guy that gets to play out in the dirt and play with horses and cows. It's a very rewarding job, great opportunity for me. Um, but as far as the Central Texas College Agriculture Program is concerned, we basically have three general areas that we cover um, and we break them down further once we get into those different disciplines. The first one is equine. So that's anything dealing with horses. Um, another one is agriculture production. So typically raising animals is the main goal with that type of degree that we have, as well as uh, horticulture. So if you enjoy plants, uh, we're very fortunate. We have a great greenhouse here on campus so where we get in the greenhouse, we get your hands dirty, we actually grow plants, look at different propagation methods, and we have a great opportunity to really do some hands-on learning. Now, Within each three of those disciplines, we have three different pathways that you can go. So it, with each of those disciplines being one of those pathways. So to start out, um, if you wanted to get started in it, we have a, a, a certificate that you can get at the beginning of all those. So if you're on the fence about going to college, it's a great way to get in, see some coursework, uh, get your feet wet in the end of the college game. And, and it's a, we, we really start to, uh, put some of the basic principles of agriculture um, out there for you to take in and think about and contemplate. Um, then from there, we actually can go to a, a bigger certificate uh, that has more coursework. And then once you get done with that, you have the opportunity to work on an associates of applied science. And those associates, um, you can stop right there, just like Dr. Foskett was talking about or you can actually take some of the, most of those credits and transfer over to a four year, go work on a bachelor's, which can lead then to a master's and to a PhD postdoc work. Um, this is just the beginning of, of your educational journey. And, and I, I, I'll step out there and say, that that's probably the same for our whole department. Um, we can, this is just a stepping stone and we wanna set you up for success. But uh, a little bit about our program, we're very fortunate. We have about a 200 acre ranch that we keep uh, 11 horses on currently as well as we have uh, a small beef cow herd um, and a lot of our classes we really take the initiative to try to jump in and and try to have some hands-on learning so uh, on the cattle side when we discuss cattle we'll we'll palpate cows for reproduction practices to make sure that they're pregnant or not pregnant uh, breeding soundness exams for the for the bull uh, do a trick test on the bull to make sure he's not uh, had, has any venereal diseases out there, uh, and, and uh, that's kind of that's on the on the cow side. On the horse side, uh, we can you definitely get on top of a horse. Uh, we have three yearlings or three three year olds now. I guess they're getting a little older, uh, but they we we work on training those during class. We learn look different training techniques. Um, but if we move into the horticulture section. Uh, we have a, we, like I said before, we have the greenhouse. Uh, we have a great horticulture instructor. Um, learn about turf grass, uh, learn about different propagation methods within the greenhouse. We have a lot of different options. And we have several students in the horticulture field that now have their own lawn care business. Uh, and they got their base uh, and on their education on how to care for plants, basically from our horticulture classes. So that's a, we're very fortunate for that, uh, that those students uh, took, um, that trusted us to teach them something. And I guess we did something all right because they have a very successful business now uh, going forward. So um, Dr. Foskett, did I miss anything or? Can you talk to them about uh, some of the ag classes that you offer uh, both face-to-face -face and online? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so one of the first big ones that we offer face to face and online that you pretty much take in all of our different pathways is intro to animal science. Mm -hmm. So that is literally we dive in and we talk about the different breeds of animals uh, on all species, uh, poultry, sheep, goat, uh, cattle, horses. Uh, we cover horses a little bit to dive in, even though we have a, a separate equine program, but not everybody goes that route. Um, we learn about their physiological aspects of them. What kind of digestive system do they are? Are they a monogastric like a human with one stomach? 
or are they a ruminant where they have multiple compartments within their stomach? Uh, four, three to four, depending on, we mainly, we deal with the ones with four uh, compartments. Uh, we look at the reproduction aspects of all three of those, all of the different species. And then we look at how does the rover meet the road? So on the cattle industry, uh, cattle industry is there to produce beef. We talk about how the beef is marketed, maybe on a live basis, as well as on a harvested basis. So, uh, and then how that gets to the retail consumer. So if somebody were to walk into Walmart, HEB, uh, Costco, Sam's, wherever you purchase products at, what you're actually buying and how it actually gets there. So you learn a little bit of the, the total supply chain getting out there, which in today's world, um, from what we're dealing with, uh, there's a lot of questions out there of what it is. And we've seen price increases in beef and, and pork and lamb as well. So it's kind of kind of interesting class to jump into. Um, we talk about ag economics, just how economics affect the ag industry. Uh, some computers in agriculture, because computers in ag are starting to be a much larger thing. We now have automated tractors where we just turn them loose and they go and do their job like they're supposed to. Some of them, most of them are manned. We now have unmanned tractors out there that are uh, that are coming out the door. So we have a very uh, fortunate opportunity there. On the equine sciences, uh, have our basic equine science, learn a lot more about the horse, the horse body itself, as well as equine behavior and training. So we have two different courses for that. So one's the first kind of the beginner and the second is the more advanced where we, we take those young horses, we train them uh, with different techniques and really try to get them to be successful later on in their life uh, going forward. Uh, we do beef cattle production. Uh, we look at feeds and feeding of of all animals and what that looks like. Look at the nutrients, how different nutrients have different digestibility. Uh, not everything is created equal and how that can affect the gut of the actual animal and what we have to do to maybe combat some of the issues. We look at a lot of range management as well. And uh, we do, we do, you do a lot of walking in that class on our school farm, just because we have a native landscape uh, with native grasses, and that's that's really what the goal of that class is. How do we manage that range to one, maximize the amount of production we get off of it, as well as two, how do we make sure we're not hurting it in a way that's gonna hurt us later in life? Um, uh, we also do wildlife conservation management. So if you're interested in that, we've had students that uh, have taken our class and that are gonna attempt to try to go towards a, a bachelor's degree and then they're gonna jump in, they wanna jump into the game warden um, thing, law enforcement on the on the animal side, the wildlife side. So it's a, we have a lot of opportunity, but when we talk about horticulture, uh, we do home gardening, um, golf, sports, uh, park management, so if you go to any type of park, trying to manage those turf grasses there, golf, uh, golf courses are a big one. Uh, we have several students that are former students that are also uh, superintendents at golf courses. So their main goal is to grow grass so somebody can go chase a little bitty white ball around 18 holes. Uh, people really enjoy that. Uh, we look at how to manage a greenhouse. Um, we also do viticulture as well. So growing grapes that are going to go for wine production later on. Now we don't, we don't make any wine, but we definitely, uh, we, we teach you, we can talk about how to grow those grapes and how to be successful with them and maybe manage some of the diseases and, uh, that can really pop up with them. Uh, we also do agronomy which is field crops. So right now, as you're driving through the countryside at all, you're gonna see corn is probably tasseled or tasseline, or we actually have a uh, Milo a grain sorghum in this area, or they're probably, probably harvesting wheat right now as well. So a lot of different opportunities out there. Um, and we, we pretty much try to cover the gamut on an entry level basis of pretty much all of our, all the ag sectors. There's not really anything that we that I feel that we don't we do not cover at some point within your degree plan. So uh, if you're interested, please don't feel free to to hit me up and we can definitely discuss your goals and your plans and see what's best for you. OK, thank you, Mr. Eric. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is uh, share my screen. And. 
hopefully. Okay, hopefully you all can see this. Marcelli, can, can we see this? Mr. Eric? Okay. Um, so this is our um, CTC webpage where if you go under academics, you can explore different academic programs and uh, you can choose all the different um, programs that we offer here at CTC. This is the science department's uh, webpage. So this tells you all the different disciplines that we offer in our science and ag department, all of the different associates degrees. Um, so I go, I'll scroll all the way to the bottom here, but you can see all the different degrees and certificates. Like I mentioned a little earlier on, two uh, biology degrees, one in chemistry, one in environmental science, and the last one here in, in geology. So these are all associates of science degrees. Now, Mr. Eric was talking about stackable certificates for his ag program. Uh, and a lot of that is also listed. I wanted to kind of show you here that these are some of the um, career opportunities for science uh, graduates. And so you can see, you can take a look at some of the different um, um, potential careers that you could possibly land uh, when you pursue a science degree. Um, I also wanted to show you, I think this is all the way to the bottom here. Okay. How to contact our department. Okay. So if you click on that on science and you can contact us, uh, through that link and our office assistant is Ms. Addie Rogan and her email. We are still accessible, uh, via email and phone. Okay. Even though we are working remotely for the most part from home. Some of us still come to come to our offices um, to to do some of our um, uh, lab related teaching or to get prepared for um, the summer or the fall classes. But we are still completely accessible through phone and through email. So I highly recommend that if you have a question, you have a concern regarding uh, any of the classes, um, if you need to contact any of your professors. Uh, find their email uh, through our website, the science department's website, and you can certainly send us an email and we'd be happy to answer your, your questions because this is, um, this is a very unique time when we are all trying to figure out how to offer a lot of our classes in an online format. Um, and uh, this is a time where we want to be available to our students so that we can answer questions and help to ease some of your concerns. I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop sharing right quick. All right, there we go. All right, I think I'm back. Um, before I go any further, I, I just kind of wanna speak on behalf of the department. Um, it's not just my feelings on this, I'm sure like speaking with uh, a lot of our faculty, uh, we all somewhat share the same feeling. We miss uh, meeting y'all and interacting with y'all uh, in a face-to-face -face format. Um, given a preference, I, I would say I lean towards face-to-face -face instructional formats, but this is a very uh, unique situation with the pandemic. Um, it is in a way, um, you know, th there's a lot of unknowns here. But it is an exciting opportunity for not only our department, but departments across CTC to use this time to explore um, formats that we may not have explored in the past <laughs> if it was a truly face to face format. So we're trying to explore um, converting our, most of our courses into completely online instructional formats uh, using virtual platforms. Okay. Um, and we're also giving it some thought where we are uh, considering blended courses. Okay. And to what degree blended uh, a lot of that is still kind of up in the air. We, we don't quite know exactly how this is going to work, but I wanted to kind of share some of our thoughts, um, on this process. But again, I just want to reiterate that we do miss seeing all of your faces on campus. Um, we miss the interaction with our students. Um, this is um, an unknown time for a lot of us. I know there's a lot of challenges that students are facing. 
um, at home trying to transition to an online format uh, when you many of you were probably used to just the face to face format. So it's a learning curve. Uh, you're also probably dealing with a lot of other challenges uh, related to your own personal life, trying to juggle work and, and school. Um, oh, homeschooling your kids. I'm sure a lot of you are dealing with that as well, trying to learn how to do that uh, because none of most of us were not comfortable with that. So we're all learning. But I just want to reiterate, uh, we understand the challenges that you face. Uh, we understand the difficulties of, but trying to juggle and meet all the different commitments uh, that you need to deal with. And just as much as you're doing it from a student's perspective, a lot of our faculty are also doing it from um, our perspective, from an instructor perspective, we are also trying to juggle working home, uh, making sure that we are accessible to all of our students, making sure that our students get the same quality of education, uh, regardless of the instructional format, because uh, that is really important to us, that all the course objectives are met, that you still get um, the same experience, a slightly different, I'm sure, but, but the same uh, educational experience. Um, and we're gonna try to implement a lot of different things for the summer and in the fall. So I'm going to uh, chat a little bit about what the summer has to offer. Mr. Eric, you can chime in at any time uh, if you if I miss something. So for the for the summer one session, so the next five weeks, we are going to be working uh, very hard on trying to make sure that all of our face to face classes are compatible with an online format and the science and the ag classes are, are somewhat challenging because all of our classes are four credit classes. We really have a lecture and a lab component to each of our classes. Um, and the lecture part is a little easier to wrap our heads around, but the lab part requires a lot of work to try to figure out what's the best virtual lab platform to use for each of our classes. And each instructor, biology, chemistry, physics, ag, geology, environmental, regardless of the discipline, that's what we're focusing on right now, is trying to figure out how to make <clears throat> the virtual uh, lab experience uh, comparable to the actual face-to-face, hands-on lab experience. And so that's where some of our challenges lie, and that's what we're trying to explore right now. Um, now, for the lecture formats, so let's just say for the summer, I, I think most of our classes that we're going to be offering in summer one, we do have a, a lot of course offerings that we are offering strictly in an online format um, for both lecture and lab, but we are offering a few select face-to-face uh, -face courses as well for summer two, which begins in July. Uh, some of those classes are anatomy and physiology one, micro for non-science majors, uh, chem 1411, which is the gen chem one, and physics 1415, which is physical sciences. So what we're doing right now is trying to make sure that uh, we are ready to offer all of these classes in a completely online format uh, starting July. And these are only five week classes, so we've got to make sure that we are completely ready. So that's what we've been doing. That's what we will continue to do for the next five weeks to make sure we're ready for July. But it's mostly going to be completely online. Um, there's a few different things we are exploring for lecture. We hope to be using more Blackboard Collaborate where we do have live um, classroom sessions set up and students are free to join those sessions and we would go over the material related to the lecture content uh, live using like a PowerPoint or um, some of us have drawing tablets so we can kind of interface with a, with a whiteboard. There's different things that we're exploring, but you all can be live watching that session and you could um, ask questions and we could have a discussion on topics that we need to focus on a little more in depth. So that's one way to do it. Uh, several of us are thinking about pre-recorded lecture videos, right? That we make available as, um, as web links on Blackboard. And a lot of this will be interfaced with YouTube. 
Um, so you can go and review the videos, the lecture videos ahead of the live Blackboard Collaborate session. So you're prepared with the content and then you could join the session and just ask questions. We can have more of a Q&A then as, as, as opposed to going over all of the concepts. But there's so many different ideas that we're bouncing off of each other and trying to figure out what's going to work for our classes. Uh, but the bottom line is we want to make sure that we cover all the content and that we are accessible to you, the students, so that all of you um, get the right kind of experience, get all of the information that you need. You have accessibility to the content as well as to your instructors. Now for the lab, for the summer, all of the labs are going to be virtual lab platforms um, offered through, say, Pearson or McGraw-Hill or um, May, uh, Hayden McNeil Lab, some of those labs are being used for the biology uh, classes as well. Um, what are some of your thoughts, Mr. Eric, for, for ag for the summer? Uh, so this summer we're offering two different sections of intro to animal science. Uh, and that class was actually developed online. So we, we're going to have online uh, lab components where they base students basically do their their research, um, then they provide, they would provide me, the instructor, uh, they would actually provide the uh, a synopsis of what their research found uh, on different topics. Uh, like the first one that is coming up is uh, compare two different breeds of cattle and uh, attributes and, and, and negative things about those breeds and, and what that, that, what that could mean for the industry uh, going forward. So that's, that's what we're doing this summer. Uh, looking into the fall and forward, uh, we're going to try to do some Blackboard Collaborate as well as some uh, videos where they would just sit, watch me do a few uh, different tasks, maybe with uh, the cows, maybe watch, they would watch me palpate and I would try to explain best of what's, what I'm doing uh, or giving shots and talking about medications and vaccines and things like that. Yeah, looking forward to the fall, uh, it's it's hard to to have a clear plan because this is a fast evolving situation and we are not exactly sure what type of social distancing requirements will need to be followed. I'm sure there's going to be social distancing even in the fall, but uh, to what extent will it be uh, restricted or will we have some kind of relaxed kind of setting, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many students we can have in a classroom. Right now, it's just in one of our regular lab classrooms, it's uh, about five or six students plus instructor, which poses some challenges uh, to the classes that we offer since we have a high uh, number of students that take our classes every semester. Um, some of our classes we see 200 students taking some of our biology classes, uh, ANP, micro, anywhere between 250, 300 students in a regular fall or a spring semester. So offering a lot of those classes, especially the lab is what I'm talking about, in a smaller setting like that will take a lot more time, will take many more instructors and a lot more lab space, um, more resources, equipment, all of that, uh, which is a very, very unique challenge, which is uh, very difficult to kind of plan around. So based on what we know right now, what we really would like to do for the fall is uh, offer our science classes in a blended fashion, okay? And when I say blended, it's really more leaning towards online with a small portion of it being offered in a face-to-face -face format if we are allowed to do that if we can still bring students on campus in a limited fashion okay uh, so your lab classes again this is all this is all very um preliminary and this is just our thoughts right now is your lab classes so if you meet twice a week um in the fall, we think, since we're meeting in a very limited manner or limited capacity, I think it's going to be more like meeting once a week for lab and not even a, your regular lab session because we've just got so many students that need to come through our classes and we've got to make sure that our students stay healthy, our, our faculty, our staff remain healthy, 
Um, so we've got to maintain all of the CDC guidelines uh, with social distancing, wearing masks, um, wiping down surfaces, disinfecting between lab sessions or between class sessions. So a lot of that will still have to be implemented. So which takes time, which slows everything down and again, meeting in smaller groups. So what I really think is going to happen. Uh, at least right now is, uh, is us thinking out loud would be this is to offer. Uh, our classes in an, in a blended fashion, and this is only for the fall. Okay. Uh, and the labs meeting for a limited capacity once a week or so, if at all. Um, so we would really like to have our students gain the experience of some of that that actual hands on interaction that you need, right? You need you need a lot of that for the hands on skills that you are gaining with the science classes, like being able to actually do at least a, a small portion of a, of a chemistry lab experiment or a physics experiment, or like Mr. Eric was saying for his. Uh, uh, ag classes, uh, the equine horsemanship and things like that. It, it, there is benefit obviously to actually riding a horse and learning what that's all about. Uh, likewise for, um, for, for geology is to be able to actually pick up a rock and be able to identify one from 100 other rocks based on physical characteristics by feeling it and you know texture and things like that. Uh, likewise, for micro, there's a lot of different staining techniques that we can have a lot of virtual labs and we can have videos presenting that particular technique. But if you actually do the staining technique in a lab, you, you gain a lot of um, insight into what can go wrong and how do you troubleshoot a lot of that, and which is very valuable in a microbiology clinical lab experience. Um, and so the same goes for A and P is to be able to actually be able to do blood typing or understanding um, how to measure lung volumes or um, to do an ECG and and things like that. That again, you get a lot of it from a virtual lab experience, but the hands-on is incomparable. Um, so if we have the opportunity, and if if everything works out uh, from what we are understanding right now, we would be able to do some of our labs in a blended fashion uh, in the fall. Um, the lecture is mostly going to remain um, via Blackboard Collaborate or pre-recorded lectures. Um, of course, we will have virtual office hours. We will be accessible through email and um, phone throughout the day. Um, so. We will still be accessible. We are just going to offer our instruction in a slightly different format, um, more leaning towards online than face to face. Um, so that's pretty much what I have in terms of uh, explaining what the instructional formats uh, are going to be for the summer and for the fall. And fall is is a projection at this point, but I'm, I'm sure a lot could possibly change in the next few months. And as they change, we will also plan accordingly, but we will be prepared regardless. Uh, we will be prepared to offer all of our classes in a purely online format. If it comes to that, that's fine. Or in a blended format. Um, and I think that's that's pretty much what I had for our discussion of the instructional formats. Is there anything else you would like to add, Mr. Eric? Nope, you did an awesome job. Okay, well, Marcelli, um, I think at this point we shall um, break it up for discussion or any uh, questions that students are asking. Yes, so um, one of the main questions that uh, students are having right now, uh, well, one of the questions that I, I, I just noticed was, how will internships be handled in the future? Uh, the student didn't specify what, uh, the class is, but I'm assuming you have various internship opportunities. So can you kind of explain how that's happening right now? So in the in ag program, we do have internships. Um, our, our goal, we haven't had many discussions around this, but we've pretty much had them on hold uh, because we don't 
we don't want to put a student in a in a position to where they could be exposed to anything and we want to keep them healthy uh, but that is going to be part of our conversation going forward for the fall uh, we won't offer any internships this summer uh, but going forward in the fall, we're definitely going to have those conversations. And um, if uh, if we if we feel like we can do that in a safe manner for the student, uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll do that. But our uh, in my opinion, our first goal is to make sure in the internship setting that our students are going to be safe uh, because right. you know you're going to have a family, you have a family at home, or you have. Uh, you have other obligations you have to take care of, and we want to make sure you can meet those needs. And uh, if if we're not going to have those, and we will just, we will look at the possibilities of what we need to do for that to replace that class. Um, there, we do have some options at our disposal, but we uh, we just have to explore those, and we just haven't had those conversations just yet. Um, the just to clarify and to kind of explain, I guess from the way that the student. Uh, wrote this, I, it seems like she might actually already be done with everything but the internship. So I'm just going to let you know uh, that that might be something you might want to start thinking about, because if that's the case, then she's going to need an answer by fall. So, sure. yep. um, which I'm, I know is like just another layer <laughs> yep. to what you guys are doing. One more on um, the to-do list. Yeah, just one more. Because um, <laughs> you're not busy enough. Uh, let's see. The, uh, a lot of it was, are you ever going to offer AMP online? That was another question. I know you mentioned uh, AMP potentially being uh, more of a hybrid mm -hmm. um, situation, more online than not, but would it ever, is that something you're considering just going completely online, I guess? Not immediately. Not immediately. Um, now, well, we 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 might consider it, but I, I think for right now we're trying to hold off on that. Um, a lot of the science classes and ANP certainly falls in that category. There is a there is a lot of worth to the hands-on experience you get with the with the labs. The lecture part can be completely online, but the labs, there is uh, there is um, value in doing dissections and being able to identify all the tiny little blood vessels, being able to identify the different chambers of the heart, um, all of the different brain regions. So we do a lot of that in a face-to-face -face setting. And you can watch people go over the content in a video, but it's not the same as actually learning by touching and feeling and actually exploring yourself and making those connections and dotting those I's and crossing those T's all by yourself. Um, there's a lot of, um, and it kind of depends, ANP1, there's, there's a lot of anatomy covered in the lab, which I think I feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, transitioning to a online format, maybe sometime in the near future, but ANP2 has a lot more physiology. And uh, a lot of that physiology, all of those techniques are very vital for our students taking these classes for the nursing program or any medical related uh, health professional pro program. So um, I wanna say right now, it's going to be mostly online uh, lab for the for ANP one and two, but there's going to be some parts of it that we would really like to bring our students on campus uh, to do the the hands on so that they can learn for themselves, make those mistakes, and learn how to fix those mistakes, uh, which is a critical part of what they need to know um, as future healthcare professionals, especially in clinical laboratories or working uh, working in the hospital being able to understand how a lot of those physiological parameters change uh, with the patient and it changes with every clinical situation. So I wanna say um, for right now, we are planning on it being mostly online. That's why I say blended, but there's gonna be some part of it that hopefully we shall, we'll be able to bring our students on campus for, okay? Um, that's the best answer I can give right now, Marcelli, regarding that particular topic. Will it change? Can it change? 
it could <laughs> it totally could uh and so as it as the situation evolves as we learn more about um about how to how this whole the virus situation is impacting our ability to to teach and uh, the instructional formats and social distancing requirements as that changes uh, over the next few months we will be watching uh, following the guidelines and um, we will try to figure out a way to either bring them back for some in some capacity face to face or if we need to stay online then that would be where we may do a hundred percent online a and p class but that is not our preference at the moment okay um thank you for your answers both of you uh those are the only questions i had i think most of it had to do because I did have another question, but it was, will summer term be on campus? And I think the answer to that is pretty much not right now, maybe at the end of summer. Um, okay. We'll see, right? Am I wrong? C could you repeat that, Marcelli? I'm sorry. Uh, the only other question they had, and I think you answered was, uh, will we be on, uh, wait, I just lost it. Will we be on campus basically uh, for summer? And the answer is pretty much no. No. Um, may, maybe at the end of the summer, you'll figure out that that could change. Yes. For the summer, um, I think it's probably safe for everybody to just, you know, just do a completely online class. And so in that regard, um, it, we, are do, we are offering a and one in summer too. So that's going to be mostly online. Um, unless something changes, uh, for the moment, I'm going to say it is going to be online. Uh, we are considering um, options for testing um, where we may do um, an online proctored testing option for, for our exams. We are exploring a little bit. I'm not sure if this is going to go much further though, uh, so I'm hesitant, but we are exploring trying to bring some bring students on campus to, to do exams and, and testing like that for the summer, but I think that's more than likely not going to happen because I think this is a critical time where we all have to be very, very careful and we want our students to be very careful. Health wise, we, we do not want anything like that compromised. So I wanna say completely online for the summer, but maybe blended for the fall. Awesome, I think those are, we got most of the questions answered through what you had already said. But um, we had others that I wasn't expecting, which was great because maybe other, there are, might be other individuals that might be in a similar situation that might have some of these questions. So thank you very much to both of you. Thank you, Dr. Foskett and Mr. Eric. Um, we really appreciate you being here and talking to us about your degree plans and how things are gonna be working in the near future. Um, I hope individuals found this uh, helpful. And so going forward, we'll continue to try to give all our students more information as we get more you know, new and more uh, updated information, but still uh, hopefully this gives everybody an answer at least for summer and then what potentially fall will be looking like. So thank you guys. We appreciate you, it. Sally, for organizing it. Appreciate it. And thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll be talking again soon. Today, this afternoon, we're going to have actually our distance education department is going to be talking about Blackboard. And that might be something that is really important to some of you. If you need more information on Blackboard, how it works and how online classes work, that would be a great opportunity today at two for you to tune in. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day.